The Unseen Scandal of Duchess Leora Chapter 5 Caught by Reverend Percy, he had stayed nearby, anticipating further danger. Together, they navigated their way out via a concealed route, crawling, scaling a tall fence, and bounding with vigorous leaps, with Reverend Percy paving the path. He never once released Leora's hand, ensuring her safety with his firm grip. Even during a brief respite beneath a bridge to catch their breath, Reverend Percy's gaze locked with Leora's, filled with a newfound determination to shield her from harm. The thought of resorting to violence was alien to him. He had never been one to initiate conflict or take pleasure in it. Yet, witnessing the extent of Leora's distress stirred within him a protective fervor unlike anything he had ever felt. I can't, she murmured, her voice barely above a breath, her body trembling as she gripped his cassock. He supported her, preventing her from falling, as every part of her ached, yet she fought to remain alert. Survival was imperative. Agatha, she gasped, struggling for air. He has Agatha. Reverend Percy strained to grasp her meaning. Leora, breathless and gesturing, managed to convey. He's going to harm Agatha. Reverend Percy reassured her firmly. No harm will come. I will ensure her safety. First, we need to get you to safety. Leora cautioned him with a weak warning. My, my husband, please don't refer to him as your husband. He softly insisted. A man who inflicts abuse does not deserve the honor of that title. He won't stop searching for me, she gasped, tears cascading down her cheeks like streams of liquid mercury. Shortly thereafter, the sound of horses galloping and neighing echoed in the distance. Percy urged her to remain resilient. Stay strong, my lady. However, he cautioned, they'll discover us if we linger here. Just a few miles along this path, he indicated to his right, though the darkness made it impossible for Leora to see. Once we reach the next town over, you'll be out of harm's way, Percy assured her. Leora, nodding in agreement, followed him as they resumed their escape. The journey was arduous, and fatigue soon overtook Leora. Needing to rest her weary feet, unfamiliar with such extensive walking, Percy showed understanding and patience. He recognized her reliance on his support. As dawn approached, they arrived at the adjacent town of Greycastle, a place whose beauty rivaled that of paradise. Reverend Percy guided Leora to a quaint cottage and unlocked the door. The interior was impeccably kept, a testament to careful maintenance. Assisting a fatigued Leora inside, all she yearned for was a place to recline and recuperate. With the sky still dim, Percy lit a lantern to illuminate their surroundings, ensuring they could navigate the cozy space. Percy stepped outside to draw water into a pot and returned to pour it into a basin near Leora, who was seated. He gently removed her shoes and placed her feet in the water, massaging them tenderly. As Leora relaxed, she craved further intimacy, caressing his hair. Percy ceased his ministrations, conflicted by his commitment to his spiritual vows. Despite the turmoil in her marriage to the Duke, Leora was still his wife, and he could not betray his promise to God. Leora withdrew her feet from the basin and bent down to meet Percy's gaze, their connection deepening. She leaned in for a kiss, but Percy, not reciprocating, held her face gently to convey, My lady, I'm sorry, we can't do this. I cannot offer you false hope. Embarrassed, Leora looked down, but Percy soothingly added, My commitment is to ensure your safety. My allegiance is to God. He kissed her forehead, a gesture Leora accepted with closed eyes, feeling the sincerity of his apology. Before she could voice her own regret, Percy assured her it was unnecessary. Helping Leora to her feet, Percy announced he would step outside to allow her some privacy to freshen up, prompting a slight smile from her. Percy kindles a flame near a large basin and proceeds to fill it with water. Into this basin, he immerses leaves of thyme and sage, infusing the water with their fragrance. With a smile directed at Leora, he announces, It's ready. He then went out to gather wood, leaving Leora to ponder over her attire and the situation with Agatha, 
whispering a silent plea for forgiveness for the turmoil she had inadvertently caused. Leora spots a thick cloak draped over a wall. Following her warm bath, she envelops herself in the cloak. As she waits, sleep overtakes her. In Lysandel Castle, Duke Elendor's fury reaches a boiling point due to the disgrace he feels from Leora's actions. Unable to locate her, he redirects his anger towards Agatha, who remains captive. He interrogates Agatha urgently, demanding the identity of Leora's clandestine lover. Agatha, perplexed, insists she knows nothing of such matters. Elendor then menacingly warns her of implicating her family, to which Agatha responds with desperate pleas of ignorance. Undeterred, Elendor commands his guards to detain her entire family. The guard obeys with a respectful bow and departs. Amidst tears, Agatha begs for mercy, offering to do anything in exchange for her family's safety. Elandor, increasingly agitated, presses her for the name of the secret lover, emphasizing each word with intensity. When Agatha whispers that Lyra has been faithful to him alone, Elandor, in a fit of rage, accuses her of lying. His suspicion then shifts towards the priest, and he aggressively demands confirmation from Agatha. Overwhelmed by the threat to her family, Agatha reluctantly nods in agreement to Elendor's speculative accusation, sacrificing the truth to protect her loved ones from harm. Elendor decrees that the tale will be shared with all nobility and even reach the ears of the Pope. Agatha, unwilling to partake because it would mean spreading falsehoods, frets over her predicament, contemplating her family's safety and her loyalty to her mistress. Amidst her turmoil, Elendor mandates that the matter be brought urgently before the royals, the Pope, and the entire assembly of cardinals, casting Agatha as the principal informant in what he dubs the unseen scandal of Duchess Leora. He then instructs his guards to release Agatha, summoning her to testify before the nobles and the highest ecclesiastical authorities, including the Pope, about Duchess Leora's alleged affair with the Reverend. Awakening to the inviting smell of food, Leora's eyes are greeted by steam rising from a plate nearby, accompanied by bread on the side. As she stretches, she catches the attention of Percy, who is seated and resting in a chair. I hope you've had a good rest, my lady, he inquires. Rubbing her eyes and attempting to sit up, Leora responds with a nod. This was just prepared in time for you, Percy adds, bringing the table closer to where Leora is seated. Gazing at the plates, she identifies it as stew, enjoying spoonfuls of it. Percy then announces, I'll be heading back to Lysandel now. Leora feels disheartened at the thought of being left alone in an unfamiliar place. Percy reassures her, You will be safe here. I must return to the parsonage to meet with the cardinals to grant your freedom. Lady Leora tried to protest, but I can't stay here alone. Reverend Percy assured her. It's just for a few days. I won't be long. They stood and looked at each other. She hugged him tightly before he left. But those few days turned into months, and Percy never returned. She knew probably her husband had captured Percy. Leora knew that people who tried to save her ends up becoming victims in her husband's hand. Months later, Percy was banished as a priest at Lysandel, after a consensus reached a verdict of improper conduct of a priest based on the testimony of Agatha and Duke. Reverend Percy was thrown into dungeon by the order of the Pope for kidnapping Duchess Leora. In all that, Reverend Percy never said where Leora was. He knew if he revealed her location, she will be eliminated by the Duke. News circulated that Reverend Percy kidnapped the Duchess. Some rumors has it that they had a secret affair and speculation of maybe she was pregnant for him sparked, or else why would he hide her? While at Grey Castle, Leora has spent months without Percy's return, she realizes that the price of her freedom is far higher than she ever imagined, not only for herself, but for Agatha and Reverend Percy, who sacrificed everything for her. She can't tell if they're alive or eliminated by the Duke. She is not enjoying her freedom since she doesn't know the fate of those who took the fall for her. She questioned her courage. She questioned her strength. She second-guessed our decisions. What are you doing? 
You can't keep hiding? Are you going to keep hiding here for how long? Although she doesn't have answers as she pondered on questions, she wants to fight. She wants to reach out to her family, but that will be worse. They will take her back to the horror she is running away from. Leora is not going back. She asked God for wisdom on what to do. Half a year later, Leora embarked on a journey of quiet revolution. She began by placing herself into the need of Grey Castle. Her noble stature, unknown to the people of Grey Castle, granted her an audience among both the common folk and the elite. Under the guise of charitable work, she initiated discussions on the sanctity of individual choices. Her words, though carefully veiled, were sharp and potent, challenging long-held beliefs with a gentle yet unyielding force. Leora becoming the center of attraction, which gathered loyalists who will do anything on her command. It was through one of her loyalists that she knew more about Reverend Percy. Percy, hailing from Thornton, endured severe maltreatment at the hands of his stepfather. As a young boy, powerless to retaliate, he found support in escape, journeying to a new town. There, he encountered Bishop Archie, whose path inspired Percy to pursue the priesthood. Maturing into a distinguished man and ordained priest, Percy resolved to revisit his birthplace, eager to reconnect with his mother and two sisters, whom he had left behind in his childhood flight. Percy arrived home only to face the heart-wrenching news that a fire had claimed the lives of his family. The blaze was accidentally set by his heavily intoxicated stepfather, destroying their home completely. Haunted by guilt, Percy can't help but fault himself for not opposing his stepfather more firmly, especially after his reluctance to accept his mother's decision to remarry following his father's demise. Meanwhile, Leora discovered that the cottage she's been living in was once the property of Bishop Archie, who bequeathed it to Percy prior to his passing. Leora was determined not to spend another day asleep without striving to ensure the survival of the man who sought to rescue her. She penned letters to the Church of Lysendel, seeking protection for Percy and Agatha. But before the letter, we'll get to the Church of Lysendel. Duke Elendor has formally requested the Pope to decree the death of Reverend Percy for abducting the Duchess. In response, the Pope inquired, Should Percy be put to death? What then is your strategy to locate the Duchess? Duke Elendor is indifferent to Leora's fate as he has already set his sights on marrying another. Duke commanded his forces to scour every neighboring town for Leora. They diligently executed the mission, combing through each town without success in locating the Duchess. When they reached Grey Castle, they conducted an exhaustive search, but were initially unable to find her. Unbeknownst to them, Leora had seamlessly integrated into the local community. Adopting the customs and appearance of the women of Grey Castle, making it impossible for the Duke's men to recognize her. Leora entertained the men, providing them with wine and companionship, engaging their attention fully. Amidst this distraction, she subtly inquired about Percy, Agatha, and Duke. Her questioning led to one of the men revealing crucial information. The Duke was seeking a new bride, Percy was imprisoned, and Agatha's whereabouts were unknown. Amid the conversation, one man insinuated with a tease, Oh, Agatha, the one given to the rats, before coughing and ominously adding, The priest will meet a similar end if he fails to disclose the Duchess's location. Leora informed one of the gentlemen that she was aware of the Duchess's whereabouts. The Duchess had anticipated that her Duke would seek her out, advising, Should they search for me, direct the Duke to me. Leora evaluated the men and remarked, It appears none of you bear any likeness to the Duke of Lysendel. As one of the men attempted to hit her with a rod, his inebriation caused him to stumble and collapse. The rest of the group mocked him for his clumsiness. Before the men made their way back to Lysendel, word of a letter from Leora to the Lysendel church had already begun to spread. The letter insisted that the church release Reverend Percy and Agatha, warning that any harm befalling them would mean the church had blood on its hands. It made clear that the town of Greycastle would not stand to lose its son to Lysendel. The Church of Lysendel's outcry led the Pope to command Duke Elendor to free Reverend Percy. However, 
Duke Ellendor defied this directive, continuing to pursue Reverend Percy's execution while challenging that if Leora had indeed sent the letter, she should reveal herself. A month later, the demands for Reverend Percy's liberation intensified. Leora had successfully rallied the aristocrats and elite members of Grey Castle, informing them that the Duke of Lysendel had wrongfully imprisoned their kinsmen and urging them to call for his release or threaten to lay siege to Lysendel. The exchange between Lysendel and Grey Castle reached such a fever pitch that the Duke was pressured into freeing Reverend Percy. Despite acquiescing, the Duke swore vengeance against both the Reverend and Leora. Once freed, Reverend Percy made his way back to Grey Castle in a state of dishevelment and weakness. Leora took it upon herself to nurse him back to health until he regained his strength. Despite his ordeal, Percy's resolve to continue his clerical duties and honor his lifelong commitment to serving the divine remained unshaken. From a young age, he had vowed to live in devotion to the Almighty. As time passed, he found himself growing fond of Leora. However, bound by his promise to maintain his purity and dedication to his spiritual duties, he refrained from pursuing a romantic relationship with her. One day, whispers spread about Duke Ellendor's passing, claiming he had died peacefully in his sleep. Leora, eager to uncover the truth behind these murmurs, searched tirelessly for solid evidence of the Duke's fate. Unable to confirm the authenticity of the rumor, she relayed the uncertain news to Percy, who was in the midst of convalescence. Overwhelmed with sorrow, Percy offered prayers for the Duke's soul, harboring a hope that the circulating tales were untrue. In Lysendel, ominous clouds gathered as word spread of the Duke's untimely demise in his slumber. Upon thorough examination, the royal physician unveiled a dark truth. The Duke had been poisoned. In response, the councilmen convened an urgent assembly of all individuals residing within the royal castle, pressing them with the gravity of the situation. They underscored the severe penalty for the assassination of a royal family member and demanded the culprit's confession. Amidst the tense gathering, a maidservant bravely came forward, admitting her role in Duke Ellendor's death. When the councilmen inquired about her identity and motives, she revealed, My name is Agatha, serving as the lady-in-waiting for Duchess Leora. I committed this act as retribution for the bloodshed of my kin. A council member inquired, your own family's blood? To which Agatha solemnly replied, Indeed, I've longed for this moment, prepared to face any aftermath. The burden of my actions, coerced by his threats against my kin, falls upon me now. Compelled, I stood falsely accusing an innocent man, Reverend Percy and Duchess Leora, before the highest ecclesiastical authority, all to protect my family. Yet my compliance was in vain as he condemned them to the dungeons, where many perished from starvation or were devoured by vermin. With my loved ones gone, I stand bereft of reason to live, ready for your verdict. The council, taken aback by her candid disclosure, knew the penalty for causing a royal's death was death itself. Adhering to this decree, they found Agatha guilty, sentencing her to death by decapitation Disguised, Reverend Percy and Duchess Leora ventured to Lysendel, arriving just as Agatha was being displayed in the town square before her execution. With her arms bound, she ascended the scaffold. Among the onlookers, she locked eyes with Leora, a connection unbroken even as she was prompted for her final prayer. Leora, filled with remorse, silently pleaded for forgiveness. Understanding and acceptance reflected in Agatha's nod before she closed her eyes, meeting her end as the blade fell. In her sorrow, Leora rested her head on Percy's chest, enveloped by his comforting embrace as they shared their moment of mourning. Following the ordeal, they made their way back to Grey Castle, where Leora chose to stay. Meanwhile, the Church of Lysendel reached out to both inviting Percy to resume his duties as a priest and Leora to take up her position as a duchess. Unaware of each other's decisions, they both independently refused. Leora, despite regarding Lysendel as her homeland, couldn't shake off the memories of distress and horror it evoked. 
she found relief in Greycastly, willing to embrace a simple life there, far from the ghosts of her past. For Percy, although Laysendell marked the beginning of a significant chapter in his life, where he encountered love, it was Greycastle that felt like the true starting point of their shared journey. Percy discovered that Leora had been summoned back to Lysendell through a letter, yet she showed no intention of returning. Curious, he inquired about her reluctance. Leora revealed that her heart belonged to that place, but turned the question to Percy, wondering why he hadn't gone back. Gazing deeply into her eyes while holding her hand, he confessed, My heart is here with you, sealing his words with a kiss. Two years on, outside their cottage, Percy walked back and forth with anxiety while Leora's cries of pain echoed from within. The cries soon ceased and a woman emerged to announce, It's a boy! Percy, elated, tenderly kissed the baby's forehead and brought him to Leora, who was resting. Together, they cradled their son, with Percy planting a gentle kiss on Leora's forehead. The couple then gazed lovingly at their new arrival, basking in the joy of their family's newest addition. The End <laughs>